one of my favorite games on the Oculus Quest has got to be Demio. So recently I reached out to the Demio community to try to compile a list of 20 tips and tricks that new players and veterans could use. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who took the time to provide me with their tips and strategies to make this video possible. And if you have your own tips and strategies that are not covered in this video, I'd love to hear about them in the comment section below. So now let's take a look at 20 Demio tips and tricks. Number one. So this one isn't necessarily going to help you complete the game, but it might save you a trip to the chiropractor. If you tend to get a sore neck by looking down at the ball all of the time, then you might want to use the tilt function. By using the analog stick, you can tilt the ball upward, so you can still have a bird's eye view of the ball without having to bend and strain your neck. Number two, make sure you're always checking the enemy stats. This will make sure you're always making the best strategic decisions. You can find out, for example, what immunities the enemy has, how strong they are, and how far they have to move in order to hit you. All of this is very important information if you want to make sure you're making the best strategic decisions each turn. Number three, you can recycle unwanted cards for extra mana. The great thing about this is that every hero on the board receives the extra mana, not just the one hero. And when you reach 100 mana, you get a new card. Now, it's worth mentioning that reusable cards like Arrow cannot be recycled. It's just the single use cards. Number four, make sure you're always using the zap spell to stun the heavy hitter in the room. It's good practice to try to stun the enemy that's going to do the most damage in the next turn. Just make sure to check before you use stun that the enemy doesn't have an immunity to it because if they do, it just won't work. Number five, lamps can be great ways of doing mass amounts of damage to groups of enemies. Just be mindful not to stand next to lamps yourself because enemies will use them against you. And also remember that poison spreads each turn. So try to keep your distance between yourself and poison tiles or you might get caught up in them and cause yourself damage. Number six. So did you know if you get close enough, you can actually use your healing potions to heal others. And the cool thing is it's not just heroes that healing works on. You can also heal other friendly objects like ballista bolts, for example. Number seven. Now this next tip might seem obvious, but the amount of times I've done this by mistake, it's make sure you don't reveal a new area at the end of your turn. Otherwise, something like this happens. Only reveal an area at the start of your turn. That way, if there are monsters, your heroes have the initiative. Number eight. The maximum amount of cards you can hold in your hand at any one time is 10. If you get any more than 10 cards, then that card that you received is just discarded. It's basically wasted. So I would say at any one time you want a maximum of 8 cards in your hand. That way you've got a 2 card wiggle room for any new cards that come along. Number 9. When you are playing a game, it's likely that you will lose a few teammates along the way. If that happens to you, don't quit out straight away because if your other teammates do manage to make it to the exit and get onto the next stage, you will respawn. Now you do only respawn with half health, but the main thing is you get to continue your adventure. Number 10. Now this next card might seem a bit useless, but used in the right way, it can be very helpful. If you see one of these elven hounds, just throw the bone at it and it will become a friendly for the rest of the level. Now these hounds are not necessarily heavy hitters, but they are a great distraction. Number 11. Now this next strategy is a bit risky, but it does have a pretty big payoff. Now using your teleport card, get your hero with the key and teleport them straight to the exit. Then using that key, they can of course exit the stage. The only drawback to this is that if that exit is surrounded by monsters, it can be a pretty dicey situation. And so your hero could be left all in their own to take on a ton of monsters before they can exit the level. That's why I tend to use the game's toughest hero, the champion, if I want to try this strategy. Number 12. Now do remember, when you destroy an elemental, it does explode. So you want to make sure that when dealing that death blow, you are doing it from a distance. Number 13. Now the coin flip card can be very valuable. Save that for the end boss. I'm not showing the end boss here because I want to keep spoilers to a minimum. But what it does, it can give you a chance of an instant kill. And if you use that on the boss, that means a one hit kill for the boss. And if you do use it on the boss, just make sure that the boss at the time doesn't have an invulnerability spell cast on them. Because if they do, then it doesn't matter if you're successful or not, it's not going to work. 
Number 14, the assassin can be the biggest damage dealer in the game. If you use the blink card in addition to backstabbing the enemy, you can do some serious damage. So when I say backstabbing, that means hitting the enemy from behind, which if you're playing the assassin, does extra damage. Number 15, swiftness and strength potions actually last the entire game. I used to think that they lasted only a few turns, but they don't. So that means that when you get them, you might as well use them straight away and start reaping the benefits. And their effects are also stackable. Number 16, a great card to use which also has stackable effects is Hunter's Mark. This makes the enemy more vulnerable and increases the damage it takes when it gets attacked. It has stackable effects, so that means you can use it multiple times on one creature to increase the damage it takes, and it's fantastic to use with powerful attacks like the backstab attack. Number 17. If you have a bottle of lie, you can use it to one hit kill giant slimes. Number 18. Don't split up the party. Now there are some exceptions to this, this is a general rule, but in most cases you want to stick together because it can be very easy to become outnumbered very quickly. And if you don't have your party around to back you up, then you're in trouble. Number 19. Strength potions also seem to give you more powerful ranged attacks as well as melee attacks. Now on the card it does say the strength potion is only for melee, but it does seem to increase the power of both your mage and your archer in their ranged attacks and spells. And number 20, after level 2 you shouldn't be stockpiling your coins. You need to spend as many coins as you can in the shop, buy as many cards as you can because the next level is the final one so any coins you have left over are just going to be wasted so spend it all. So that's my 20 Demio tips and strategies. Now is there a strategy that you use that wasn't listed in this video that you found to be super helpful? If there is, let me know in the comment section below because I'd love to hear about it. If you like this video, remember to smash the like button and if you want to be kept up to date with all the latest Oculus Quest news, reviews and content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you for watching as always and I'll see you in the next video.